Good morning. Good morning. Um, some of you may know my daughter, uh, Mary. She makes uh, greeting cards uh, featuring heart shapes that she finds in nature, and she calls them love notes. Uh, she's selling them to raise money for youth mental health. And in memory of her husband, James, you may have heard of James's journey. And uh, so she's having an open house this week on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, she lives at 18 Brayside Road. So uh, if you can make it there, you'll be very welcome. And hopefully she'll be able to raise a lot of money for this very worthwhile cause. Mm -hmm. And that's 18 Brayside Road? Yes. Okay. If anybody doesn't know where that is, I'm imagining that Sue can help you find it. Oh, she's grinning at me. Okay, second, another reminder is that uh, we need families to read our uh, Advent candle lighting part of the services starting next month. Uh, if you would like to do that, we'd like you to do that. Volunteer your family, um, and you can define a family any way you want. Okay, so just get a hold of Joanne, tell her, and she'll fit you into the schedule. S send her an email. Uh, I also want to talk about email briefly, simply to give you a quick reminder that all of the staff are very focused on worship on Sundays. It is probably a mistake to try and ask us about something, to do something, because you know what's going to happen? It's going to go away. And besides, we're so focused, it, it, it's just helpful if you let us do our thing. And that is actually the case for a lot of you as well. You come here to worship, to spend time with your friends. If there is a fair lawn matter that has nothing to do with the Sabbath, then send us an email and we will take care of it. And uh, actually, normally I would say you can talk to me about it after the service if there's something troubling you. You can, you can email me, you can make an appointment with me, uh, but not today. My vacation starts at 11.30. <laughs> Just letting you know. I was asked if I was going to talk today about the election in the United States this past week. I am not. Today is about heroes <laughs> and heroines. There is an island in the Inner Hebrides of Scotland called Staffa. It's impressive for many reasons, not the least of which is Fingal's Cave, the mythic home of the Celtic giant. The flow of North Sea waters in and out of the cave has a particular sound and rhythm to it. It inspired a musical piece by none other than Mendelssohn. The cave and the island inspire for many reasons beyond that though. And one of them is it is made of unerodible, almost unerodible basalt. Hexagonal black spires are all over the island. They absorb the impact of the flow of water and storms. The island, according to a guide, has remained unchanged through centuries. It is little different than when Mendelssohn saw Fingal's cave. Storms have not defeated Staffa. Some of the weeks of our lives are tougher than others. Some places have a particular ability to absorb the power of storms and give us confidence that there are things humans can do to bear and deal with these storms. This is one of those places. Over the years, it has seen storms, it has seen wars, it has seen rumors of war, famine, pestilence, a world of suffering and individual suffering. All of those have visited our doorstep. Welcome to Fairlawn, where no matter what is going on in your life, you are welcome no matter what is going on in the wider world, you are welcome. And where some of us are battered, and some of us in our turn, are those six-sided columns of basalt to absorb the battering and give you a sense of solidity in your life. 
I'm the minister, Cameron Watts. I identify as he, him, and it is my privilege to be here. On this day, with so much tumult on our minds, we are not so stony-hearted to forget the strength of character of the people who once inhabited this land on which we worship and work and live, nor the sacrifice of their descendants in times of war. The Wendat, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga of the New Credit were displaced by a more hidden violence, and their descendants have called on us to seek truth and hear it and seek reconciliation and do it. We have accepted those calls. And this week, as we mourn the death of Senator Murray Sinclair, primary author of our nation's Truth and Reconciliation Report, I hope we determine to hear the call more clearly. Please be seated. And invite you to join in our responsive invitation to worship. Praise the Holy One. Praise the Holy One, O oh my soul. I will praise the Holy One as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. Happy are those whose hope is in the Holy One, their God, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith forever, the Holy One sets the prisoners free. The Holy One lifts up those who are bowed down. The Holy One watches over the strangers. The Holy One will reign forever. Praise the Holy One. Gospel reading this morning is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 through 44, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Scriptures. As he taught, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. And many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called to his disciples and he said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Sometimes I want to say about... Um, Eleanor and the choir, it doesn't get any better than this. And then Sam comes along. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to you too. 
So this Sunday's reflection is different. I'm not going to leave you with homework. There will be no takeaway that you have to go and think about afterwards. There's no homework beyond an appreciation of the sacrifice of others. I was eight years old when I first saw a widow's walk in Gloucester, Massachusetts. I was visiting family and I asked my aunt, how come she didn't have a cool playroom up on her roof? And then she said, well, there's another one over there. It doesn't have a playroom. It's just a fence around the top. I said, well, what is it? And she said, it's called a widow's walk. And in maritime towns, there was a place where a woman or the rest of her family could go up on top of the roof and either in, be in this little enclosure or out in the wind and could watch the ships as they came into harbor to see if her husband or her sons were safe or if she was a widow. That's why it was called a widow's walk. It could be simple, it could be elaborate, but it was a solitary place. It is a solitary place just like any place where women walk as they look beyond the horizon for news of a husband or a son or a brother or a father or a grandchild, a sister or daughter, gone to sea, gone to begin a new life for a family or gone to war. Jesus told a story about a widow. He went from having this good conversation we talked about last week with one scribe, whom he was able to tell, you are not far from the kingdom of God, to telling people to beware of most of the scribes. Oh, they look good, but that's what their lives are about, looking good. They have long robes because they swish on the ground and you can hear them coming as they swish. They like to be greeted as scholars. They expect to have the best seats in church at the front, facing the rest of the congregation. At a banquet, they expect a seat at the head table. They live for their position. They say long prayers so that you would know they are pious. Shakespeare might have said of them, methinks they pray too much. Jesus said they would face great condemnation because they saw and lived for only this life's glory. Uh, if you're tempted to be too harsh on them, don't be, because many of us don't see much farther than this life. We do all we can to secure a good life here on earth because we think that's it. However, their condemnation, Jesus said, would be all the greater because they took advantage of people, including widows who needed their protection. The scribes and their allies in the religious hierarchy set the rules for how much, when you visited the temple, you gave to God. And they benefited from what people gave. No one, not even the poorest widow, was exempt from their rules. And Jesus is sitting there across from the temple treasury, watching people make their donations after warning about these same scribes and the burdens that they place on others, watching people burdened by life being further burdened by having to give money to meet the rules of the temple and stay close to God. All the money in Jesus' day were coins. And I guess you could tell how much someone donated by listening to the sound of the coins as they fell. Probably you could even hear two pennies drop.
The widow gave everything she had. At risk of having her house devoured, living with precarity, she opts for generosity, not for the scribes, but to the one in whom she believes. Like other women on the widow's walks of life, including those whom we remember today, who gave their loved ones, she gave all she had. I do not, I do not use their sacrifice as a support for the nobility or the necessity of war. I only draw our attention to it so that we honor them too. Honor them for giving everything they had. I'm going to invite you to remain standing throughout our time of remembrance. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. As our act of remembrance today, we are going to hear the names of the fallen from our rule. And you are going to repeat their names back. And what I'm going to do is ask the first person sitting on 
are standing on my right, who is Steve, and nobody knows this is happening. He's going to read the first name, we will respond, and then we're just going to go around the church. So if it gets to you and somebody goes, please read the name that's next. But I ask all of you, after you hear the name, to offer the name back for all of us. William Adams. William Adams. Charles Henry Fay. S. Hetherington. C. E. Larkin. C. E. Larkin. H. G. Kinchin. Roy Robertson Riggs. Roy Robertson Riggs. Robert Clifford. Robert Clifford Darling. James Montrose Murray. James Montrose Murray. James Dewar. James Dewar. John McKay Coulter. John McKay Coulter. John Hannaford Simmons. John Hannaford Simmons. Richard William Rankin. James Roger Bulk. John Heron McDermott. William Mackay Carlyle. William Mackay Carlyle. Harold Gladstone Murray. John Robinson Woods. Murray Grant Gunn. John Gordon Douglas. John Gordon Douglas. Reginald Edgar Gray. William Lindsay. William Aldright Keeler. William Aldright Keeler. Gordon Bain. Bruce Black. James Bradley. James Bradley. Norman Brown. George Chapman. George Chapman. Harlan Keeley. Harlan Keeley. John Kerwin. John Kerwin. Clifford Ma. Clifford Ma. Andrew McNaughton. Jack Mosey. Jack Mosey. Alexander Smith. Alexander Smith. J. Alvin Smith. J. Alvin Smith. A. Gordon Williams. A. Gordon Williams. Harold Young. Harold Young. Ernest Cannon. Ernest Cannon. Henry Crowther, Peter Fleming, Hugh Grant, Kenneth Miller, George Molesworth, W. Ralston Roberts. Donald Stanfield. J. O. Stewart. James W. White. Harold R. Wright. 
Thank you for speaking their names aloud and once again into our memories. Sorry. As you sit down, you might want to offer peace to each other.
Our Lord's Prayer this day is a special version offered in times of war, a prayer for peace. Our Father, our Mother, our caregiver, who art in heaven, slow to anger and of great mercy, lover of all peoples of the earth. Remind us that all the nations are as nothing before thee, their governments but a shadow of a passing age. Grant to thy children throughout the world and especially the leaders of the nations, the gift of prayerful thought and thoughtful prayer. That following the example of our teacher, we may discern what is right and do it. Help us to protect and to provide for those who are hungry and homeless, especially those who are deprived of food and shelter, family and friends, by the tragedy of war. Forgive us for neglecting to seek peace and pursue it, and finding ourselves in each new crisis more ready to make war than make peace. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Let us not seek revenge, but reconciliation. Let us not delight in victory, but in justice. Let us not give ourselves up to pride, but to prayer. Be present to all thy children ravaged by war. Be present to those who are killing and to those who are being killed. Be present to the loved ones of those who are killing and to the loved ones of those who are being killed. Subdue our selfish desires to possess and to dominate and forbid us arrogance in victory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May that which you give this morning be a symbol of giving all that you have for the sake of others. City trucks blocked the streets around the cenotaph, protecting those who shuffled to form their own cordon around strangers who were neighbors. Protection in case of a threatened lunacy, as those gathered tried to bring meaning to old lunacies. Lunacies of arms merchants and egocentric leaders and those who believed their call was to cull the herd of its most vulnerable. The vulnerable stood between the trucks and the veterans to shield them and in silent grief and thanks stand with them in the cold. The cloud ceiling blocked the view of the fly past of Harvard's. Their thrumming engines bounced off the buildings as the echoes of war never seen. Necks bent heavenwards in hope of a glimpse of the flying boxcars on which so many trained to be above and in their own fray. The sound system filled the void left by the planes with names and prayers and poems and choruses offered by adults who were children only after the conflicts and children everyone sent to bed each night with a prayer they would never know conflict. How, one asked, how did they fight in those big black hats? No answer came from the foreign field dress on each side of the monument. 
nor anyone on the dais, nor the man nearby in a thousand dollar top coat, nor the woman in braids with bare tattooed legs, nor those whose graves were kissed by a poppy in every village and town and city. Without prompting, heads bowed at the first notes of a bugle, except, except for the clear-eyed, uniformed agent who stood at attention, eyes forward, peering into past glories that were tragedies and tragedies that were glories. Something like the cold wind squeezed tears down smooth and pockmarked and stubbled cheeks, licked from the corners of their mouths or wiped on a sleeve. After silence, new notes from the bugle. Released from their place in the freeze, some slipped away during the slow parade of wreaths. Most stayed awkwardly, more words, than the drums beat the retreat. The not fallen marched off. What now? Thank you for watching. If you appreciate this content, please share it with your friends. Consider giving us a like, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon as it really helps our channel. And, as always, be good to you.